Uh, good morning, my name is Benjamin Poirier. I'm part of SUSE Labs, and today I'm going to talk to you about patch sorting in the context of the SUSE Linux kernel repository. This is going to be a continuation of my presentation from last year. Since not everyone here is a usual contributor to the SUSE Linux kernel repository, I'm going to begin with just a brief overview of how this repository works. Unlike the upstream linux.git repository, the repository used for the kernel used in all SUSE Linux distributions or SUSE Linux releases is um, organized a little bit differently. It's the kernel source.git repository. It's based on a release from upstream over which many thousands of patches are applied one after another in an order defined in the series.conf file. Most of these patches are actually backports of commits from newer releases than the base version used for a kernel source.git release. The series.conf file lists all the patches in the order that they are applied, and it used to be organized by subsystem, feature, and driver that each patch was related to. As I argued in my presentation last year, this order has many disadvantages, which revolve around the fact that most of the patches um, actually overlap many areas of the kernel. What I suggested instead is that we sort patches according to the upstream order of the commits that each patch backports. One more thing to mention um, is that the each patch file contains SUSE-specific tags, which identify the provenance of the patch. In particular, the git commit tag, which lists the upstream commit ID of the content of the patch. As I explained last year, upstream history contains or is formed by mer branches and merges, which form a directed acyclic graph. Using a topological sort, we can generate a linear order that is used as a reference to sort the content of series.conf. This means that uh, it is no longer required to manually edit series.conf. This can be handled automatically. Other advantages are that uh, there is a reduction in patch application context conflict, a reduction in build failures, and runtime failures. I encourage you to rewatch or, or look at uh, the paper from last year's presentation for more justification for all these arguments. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so during today's presentation, um, I'm going to give an overview or a review of the changes that happened to patch sorting since last year. And as we will see, many of these changes actually foreshadow future changes. So I'll also gather your thoughts uh, on the future directions and where we want to go. I'm also going to take advantage of today's presentation um, to to look again or to investigate certain misconceptions about patch sorting. Uh, one of these misconceptions, actually, I, I was made aware of it in a discussion on the internal kernel mailing list uh, with Yuji Slabi and Takashi a few months ago. So Takashi actually thought that the sorted section inside series.conf only contains backports of commits that are in mainline. So this is actually not the case. Uh, inside the sorted section, we can find backports of commits in mainline, yes, but also commits that are in subsystem maintainer trees, and even patches that are not upstream, that are out of tree. There is, in fact, uh, over 40 possible subsystem maintainer trees that are recognized by the scripts currently. And I have to point out that uh, it is absolutely not necessary for every user of the sorting scripts to have all of these repositories available locally. It's only required to have the mainline linux.git repository available, but each of the other ones is optional. And that actually results in a lot of the complexity of this in, inside the sorting scripts, because different users are going to have a different reference for upstream commits. So not all of these repositories are going to be available locally, 
And even when they're available locally, they're not all going to be of the same freshness, so to speak. So it, it's going to vary depending on how long ago the user last fetched from upstream. It might be two weeks ago or more just before running the scripts. So onto the actual, the meaty part of the presentation, the developments that happened since last year. First development uh, is packaging. When I just after the presentation last year, I, I had sort of introduced this methodology to everyone. I had encouraged uh, everyone to use it, sort of called for a switch of series.conf, but this was still in heavy developments. So the tools uh, were spread over three repositories, the Git helpers repository, which contained Git sort, a generic tool to sort commits from any Git repository, KS apply, which contained tools specific to kernel source to deal with series.conf, and uh, the SUSE patch tags, and Quilt KS, which is a fork of Quilt that can uh, work using series.conf directly instead of a simpler shadow copy. So quickly, in just like the weeks after the presentation, um, the content of Git helpers and KS apply was added to the kernel source.git repository under the scripts subdirectory and mostly developed in the scripts branch itself. And uh, Quilt KS was packaged on OBS. So this made it easier for users of kernel source to use the scripts because they didn't have to fetch from all of these other repositories. However, as a limitation, it doesn't address the fact that the git sort dependencies have to be handled manually. And in particular, uh, pygit2, the Python module, which is an interface to libgit2 library. So this is still a shortcoming today. And this brings me to my first question to discuss, is should we move the sorting tools outside of kernel source.git to their own package? So move them to OBS, for example. Um, dependencies would be handled automatically as part of the packaging system. Um, it would avoid, so currently the scripts are developed in the scripts branch, and then every time there's changes there, this branch has to be merged to all of the other branches in active development. And uh, sometimes some branches, they sort of fall behind because scripts is not merged inside of them. Um, another advantage of, of packaging on OBS is that it would allow for eventual binary components. So currently the scripts are just interpreted, but eventually we could have some compiled uh, executables. As a slight disadvantage or, or something that I thought about is that the scripts are still in, in perpetual developments. There's sometimes problems with them. So currently, if there's a problem, I can just push an update to kernel source directly. And when kernel source users are next going to update, they're going to get the fixed version of the scripts. Uh, whereas if the scripts would come from an external source from, from OBS, users would have to figure out themselves that they need to, to update their packages to get the fixed version. Um, does, does anyone have some thoughts about... Should, so this, this was already raised, I think, uh, by Takashi uh, maybe a few months ago. Um, just as a question, should, should we move the scripts out? And, and it makes sense. Um, Mikhail? Maybe a few. I this is also recorded. Uh, okay. No, no. Um, maybe one more problem. Mm. Uh, because the uh, Git sort uh, rules are used from uh, the Git hooks. So, mm -hmm. Git hooks would then fail if you didn't have that package. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Um. Yeah. Uh, my point was that there is another disadvantage of this approach would be that uh, we are using some of the scripts from git sort uh, from the git hooks for checking before committing, uh, before pushing. So that would now fail if the package wasn't installed. Now the git hook can rely on git sort utilities to be there because they are in the same kernel repository. If it uh, if it's a separate package, then uh, the checks would fail when the package is not installed. Yeah, I, I guess we could make it so that the scripts just uh, the the pre-commit hook skips the check. And as I I'll talk about later in the presentation, I, I really want to have server-side validation. So even if the local checks are not done, it's it would be an inconvenience to the user, but the failure would would happen on the server anyways, eventually. 
Yeah, or we could have something like just a meta package, like kernel source development. Yeah, and it would basically pull in all the necessary packages mm. for the series sort. Yeah, that seems like the easy. And or you 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 can have even like if you want to package it separately, I don't see a big problem in that either. Like if you have it in the devel somewhere in the yeah, devel branch, and everyone kernel can, tools repository maintained by uh, yeah, by Jeff. exactly that. Then the updates can be pretty quick as well. Yeah, like. Like now you push to Git3, then in that case you would just push to the developer repository in the OPS yep. and it will appear you as a maintenance update for you. So right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's, so that's for like sure. it could be pretty agile even if you have it packaged separately. So honestly, I don't think there is a huge difference if you can have the meta package to handle the package dependencies because that's kind of pain if you set it up for the first time. <laughs> Once you have it set it up, well, it's easy. <laughs> but yeah. The meta package would make it probably easier to start a bit. Mm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sounds sounds like good points, but it sounds like a direction that we want to move in. So let's also keep the presentation moving. Um, the next significant change that happened is actually in the usage of the sorted section. Uh, this usage went up significantly, especially for the SLE 15 branch. Um, essentially, we can say that nowadays, um, in principle, at least every commit in the SLE 15 branch that is a backport of an upstream commit is uh, added to the sorted section. Um, in practice, so there, there's still some content outside of the sorted section. Before that, there is the before the sorted section, there is uh, notably the backports from stable branches. Those are sort of naturally ordered, so it, it's okay to keep them outside. And after the sorted section, we have out of tree patches, um, which are still organized using the old uh, approach of subsystem feature and driver kind of loose approach. And I think. That works well for out of tree patches. However, as a slight limitation, again, I while preparing the presentation, I had a look. There's, there was at the time, just maybe last week, uh, just over 500 patches outside of the sorted section coming after it. So in theory, out of tree patches. But with a quick look, I saw that about 150 of them contain a git commit tag. So in principle, these could be or these should be inside the sorted section. I didn't look into more details why they are outside, but this is potentially, uh, if somebody wants to do some some cleanup on kernel source, this is probably some low hanging fruit and something easy to do. As the usage of the sorted section increased, um, users started to be faced with errors from the sorting scripts. So users would check out a pristine copy of the SLE 15 branch, try to run series sort, and be faced with some errors. So some, some of these errors uh, that, that some of you are familiar with, no doubt. What would happen is that someone would commit a version of series.conf to SLE 15, which, which was broken, which wouldn't sort. And so they would break series.conf for every user, for everyone else who would check out SLE 15 after them. This essentially is the same thing that would happen back in the days when somebody would commit some code to a repository and that, that code didn't build, they would break the build for every user. And uh, in fact, the solution to, to both of these problems is the same. The solution is through validation. The changes from a user should be validated before they are merged into the main branch of a repository. This is uh, complicated for, for patch sorting by the fact that uh, sorry, uh, the, the sorting scripts rely on a local copy of the upstream repositories as a reference for the order that the, the patches should be put in. And different users are going to have, as I explained earlier, are going to have a different reference. So different users might arrive at a different result, different series.conf result. This means that Oh yeah, so, so for an example of, of different results, so consider a SCSI patch which was first added to the SCSI subsystem maintainer branch or maintainer tree and then merge upstream later on. If a user hasn't fetched from upstream recently and does the series sort, uh, the, the SCSI patch is going to appear to be in the subsystem maintainer branch and is going to be sorted as such. Whereas if a user has fetched recently from upstream, then the patch is going to appear to be in mainline. So two users would get different results of series.conf. Now this is different today, but you have to remember I'm, I'm sort of reviewing the changes since last year. So as, as it was last year, this, this would happen. 
Um, this leads to a race condition, actually, because a user, so if, if we want to do server-side validation, uh, it leads to a problem because a user might uh, commit some changes and these changes are valid, but between the time that the user has, has generated the series.conf and the server would be validating it, the upstream repository state can change in, in the way that I showed earlier so that the series.conf, the resulting series.conf would also change and the, the series, the, the series file that was valid on the user at the time of the commit would become invalid by the time that the server is checking it and the changes would be rejected. This is something that we want to avoid. So how I, how I resolve this, because we, we still want to avoid invalid uh, series file. So how I resolve this, I stepped around the problem by uh, creating a local commit hook, which essentially uh, reruns the series sort on the user's machine uh, based on the git index, so the staging area used by git before a commit, and checks that the results are the same. Um, this local commit hook still has some limitations. So first of all, it doesn't always run. Um, the pre-commit hook doesn't run in particular for git merges. This is a problem for branch maintainers. And it's possible to also explicitly skip it. Um, even if, if users are, are perfectly behaved and always check their changes, uh, there is still the problem that there can be changes in the upstream state which require changes in series.conf. So let's look at, at this situation in more detail. So I already talked about the outdated case that's on the right. Um, let's look actually at the case that's on the left. So consider an IPsec patch, which is added to the sound subsystem. So obviously this is incorrect. This, this would be like a user manually editing series.conf and creating an invalid series.conf. Um, these changes uh, were never correct. The patch should be in, in IPsec. So I, I call this an invalid uh, series.conf. This kind of problem is caught by the local commit hook. Next, consider the case that we saw earlier where the SCSI patch is added to the, subs the SCSI subsystem section, upstream is refreshed, so the SCSI patch should be moved upstream. These changes were valid given a past state of upstream repositories, but they're no longer correct. They need to be refreshed, so I just call them outdated. And this was a misconception as well. There was some debate. It was like invalid, outdated, is just incorrect. But it's actually important to distinguish between these two situations because they have different remedies. The invalid one, as I said, is, is already handled by local commit hook. But the outdated one was not handled last year. So it was still possible that uh, people, users of kernel source, would, would check out C15. Again, it was fresh. They would have fresh upstream reference and they couldn't actually add new patches. There was a problem. The scripts would tell them series.conf is outdated. So users would need to always manually refresh the content of series.conf be before they could do their own work. This was a problem, and thanks to Takashi and Oliver, who, who really pushed and, and said that this had to be fixed, I introduced a new non-upstreaming mode to the scripts. So in this mode, patches remain in a subsystem section, even if they are found in repositories upstream of that section. Um, essentially, this is an implementation detail, but essentially each subsection is handled as if it was an entire sorted section. And the patches that are in there can remain in there. Um, but at some point, upstream does move forward, and we, we do want to refresh series.conf from time to time. This is now handled explicitly, so we can specify a new option, which is the, the former default mode, but the dash u or upstream mode. And in that mode, uh, the patches are going to be moved upstream as appropriate. I think that not many people use this mode, so I'm just going to give a quick, quick demo of how it works. And it's also going to be, again, an opportunity to make some observations. So I'm just going to check out a version of SLEE 15 branch that dates from 
just about a week ago or two weeks ago. We can have a look at series.conf. So we see that, of course, it contains many upstream patches and some patches which are in subsystem maintainer trees. We can run the sorting. In this case, it takes quite a while because it has to rebuild the index I just fetched before the presentation. So there are no changes. Um, because this is a few weeks old, if we rerun the sort again with the dash user upstream option, we can see that there are now some changes. So have just remember what it looks like now. And we look at the updated version. We see that there are much fewer changes that are in subsystem maintainer trees because all of the other all of the other patches were moved to the mainline section. There's been, as we all know, a new release of upstream. And patches which were in subsystem maintainer trees are now upstream. This is the old mode that series sort was, was operating in all the time, but now it's just when, when someone really wants to do the refresh explicitly. So I would, I, I do run this from time to time and then I would commit this, just say refresh the ordering in series.conf. Um, oh yeah, let's, let's still have a look at what, what remains in series.conf. So we still have one, um, one subsystem maintainer branch that we'll come back to. Um, and we have out of tree patches. So as I, as I said earlier, there are, even in the sorted section, there can be out of tree patches, but actually most out of tree patches uh, come after the sorted section. So we have, we're at 95% of the file, but we still have some, quite a few entries that come afterwards. This brings me to the question, um, to my next question is should we remove the out of tree section from the sorted section, deprecate it? This was uh, suggested by Mikal a few weeks ago and I think Takashi as well. They sort of said it's kind of a misnomer to have the sorted section, uh, to have out of tree patches in the sorted section, it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, I, I agree with that. If we remove the sorted, the out of tree section from the sorted, the, if we remove the support for it, uh, personally, uh, it will remove some special case code from the scripts, so it would be kind of a cleanup. And I don't see substantial disadvantages. It's it's ah yes. So please go ahead. That's 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 the purpose of the presentation. Uh, no, because there's uh, as you already said, there are patches which are depth technically upstream patches because they have a git commit ID and whatnot in the out of tree section. And moving all the out of tree commits to that sorted section, out of tree section would automatically merge them into the into the sorting order. Yeah, also, I'd prefer that. Mm, so what I'm suggesting is actually the opposite of I think what you understood. I think we just misunderstood. Okay. What I want to do is move what's in the sorted section in the out of tree, so move this outside of the sorted section. No, 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 don't, don't do that. But there's only one patch there. No, but <laughs> there's tons of patches down right. there which have yep. a git commit which should actually be in the sorted section. Yep. If we would kill the section down uh -huh. and have it to that out of tree, the sort script would automatically merge it up. So is that the good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing because I often have uh, ah, okay. merge errors mm. with people, back, okay. like the, the lots of the word team uh, just pack their patches on the end and have uh, and then someone backports it again and I get a merge error and have okay. to fix it. So are you saying that the, the out of tree section is useful because you can move patches from the bottom of series.conf, move them to the out of tree section, run series sort again, and it's going to sort the patches. Exactly. Okay. If, if you move them, okay, so can you repeat your comment? So actually, 
I do this occasionally, and I do it, do it by just moving it at the beginning of the se uh, sorted section, and then I'm going to sort it to sort it in the proper order. Right? Okay. So that's how I do sort patches which are from wrong sections. Okay. So. Yeah, there, there's many different uh, workflows. Just go ahead. I'll comment uh, back on what Jack said too. Yeah, uh, I think we should distinguish two completely different cases of out of three patches. Mm -hmm. There are out of three patches which uh, we don't ever expect to get into mainline, like SUSE specific patches or well patches which are not on their way to mainline, and we right. don't expect to ever get them. Mainline. Yeah, this is a there is actually absolutely, <laughs> in, uh, in my opinion, there is absolutely no reason for these patches to be in the sorted section. And then there are patches which are not in uh, registered maintainer tree. For example, if they are in a maintainer tree which is known to rebase mm -hmm. all the time, or in well, for some other reasons, but they are on their way to mainline, and I think those should be in this out of three part of sort of okay. So you're, you're distinguishing between what we would take in, in patch mainline tag between the never and the not yet cases, I yeah, guess. Exactly. Or, or sometimes not yet, sometimes it says submitted. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And what you're saying is that the ones that are submitted or that are uh, not yet, but expected to be there soon, uh, they can belong in the out of tree section. Exactly. As, as we see, this example is actually the patch that's in the out of tree section, expected to be there soon since 2012. <laughs> uh, yeah, that happens, of course. Is this one? Yeah, authored by Hannes and act by Neil. Ben, ben maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe you think about it. There's the well-known repositories with where there's a whole lot of, but there's still more maintainer repositories we you don't have on your list. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you we only need them once or twice. Oh, you, you, yeah. And so this is the perfect section. They say yes, it is on its way. It is okay. in some repo, but it's, there's no use adding this repo to the global checker script. Okay, so it, it sounds actually like lots no. of people no. like the out of tree section for some special use cases. So go ahead. Well, yeah, so, so this particular one is actually one of the patches which Neil was supposed to review and then eventually push upstream or something. Yeah, like. this, this was just a joke. Um, we don't and, have to do it. But then he didn't particularly like the patch. In, in, however, the customer requiring this patch, liking it. So, hmm. Someone has uh, to make up his mind what to do with that patch. Uh, well, in that case, I suppose the status changed and patch mainline should be updated <laughs> to reflect that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah but I, it's not me making the decision. Uh, right, yeah. There is a problem with the use of uh, the out of three section for sorting patches. Uh, it used to work that you move the patches to the out of three section and they would get sorted. Yep. But uh, due to some changes uh, to the sorting, yep. uh, it no longer works for uh, patches which are in the uh, okay. maintainer trees. Yeah, I'm glad you bring this up. Actually, this the, the changes that you refer. So what what he said is that it used to be the case that you could put uh, new patches or patches that you want to sort in the out of tree section, run series sort, and they would be sorted. And this, as he says, no longer works. Actually, if you want to operate that way, you have to use this new dash u or upstream uh, option because. Oops. As it says, the dash u, so upstream option, is going to move patches upstream between subsystem sections. And the out of tree section is considered as a subsystem section, although it's, it's kind of a misnomer. And so if, if you want to add patches in out of tree section and move them up, as um, Johannes was also suggesting, you have to use that dash u option nowadays. So may I, I'm just going back to what Michal and Torsten said. I, yep. I see a little point of out of tree patch section and mm. sorted section because, uh, for example, in, a, in our case, live pitching tree is not in that well-known list of maintenance tree. So I use uh, out of tree section in non-sorted section. And when this commits appear upstream, I yep. just resort it then to okay. sorted section and that's it. So it's just a question of workflow. Okay. So, if, so if there's a point 
uh, to remove the out, the out of three section from the sorted section where, because it would make code simpler. I would be for for it fully because it just it makes sense. Okay. There's no point to have it there. Yeah, yeah. There, there's so I said it would make it simpler, and there are some alternate uh, workflows which still which would work without. So it would be possible to do like what you're describing, what Jack is describing, without the sort of the out of tree section using alternate workflows. But if people have some workflows using that section and they like them. This is actually how I, I also start started doing the patch sorting, um, so I don't mind leaving it in. So that's 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 perfectly fine with me. Because, yeah, because I personally, and this is my personal opinion, because I would go even further. I would remove that list of well-known okay. maintainer the repositories. So th that is a good idea. It's kind of an, the the alternative to this idea is that all the stuff that currently comes after the sorted section, you're saying we should move it inside the sorted section, but still out of tree, right? Is that, that, that's what you were saying. That's, that's another possibility. Um, it would maybe require some, some, some careful changes, but it's something I'll consider. Uh, I, I say it requires some care because some of those patches, like I pointed out, have git commit uh, IDs and currently if, or git commit tags, and currently if the scripts encounters some some patches that have git commit tags in the out of tree section, it tries to at least make sure that those commits are found in the reference repositories, in, in some cases at least, and so it, it might encounter more errors. It, it might not be ready to handle all the stuff that currently follows, but it is still a good idea and, and something we can consider instead. So the sort of the out of tree section is, is going to stay for now. Uh, I'll just point out also, Jack, you said that uh, how you do it is you add patches at the beginning and you rerun the sort. This is going to work if those patches are in mainline. Uh, but it's not going to work if the patches uh, have sort of moved upstream but are still in subsystem maintainer trees because it would look like the commits have moved from mainline to a subsystem maintainer tree. It, it's like the commits move downstream, which is an invariant that is rejected by the scripts. So I use this workflow more so than I check for Git fixes for Git fixes. Yeah, then those those are pretty old commits usually, and they're in mainline. But yeah, you, you can add them to the uh, out of tree section instead. Or oh, so the alternate workflow to add patches without having to edit series uh, dot conf is to use the series insert uh, helper script. And this uh, you don't have to edit series dot conf manually. It doesn't require the existence of the out of tree section, and it's still gonna insert new entries in series dot conf. So this is described, I should point out, also. Um, there is a readme file for all the scripts which describe the main use cases, including this other series insert. And so I highly recommend having a look at the uh, readme as well. Um, oh yeah, so another so when when we do this refresh, when when patches move upstream and and we want to refresh the content of series.conf, not only do we have to refresh series.conf itself, but we also have to refresh patches. So consider the, another example of an IPsec patch. Uh, this IPsec patch was originally added to kernel source in in one commit, where at the time the patch was in the IPsec subsystem maintainer three. And the patch was tagged as such. It was queued in subsystem maintainer repository. And as time passed, the patch was moved on to the net tree and eventually to the mainline tree. So a little bit later on, uh, I created another commit which refreshed the patch order, but also refreshed the patch to update the tags, saying that it is no longer in uh, queued, but now in mainline. So when a patch is in the subsystem maintainer tree, we have the git repo tag containing the URL to that repository and uh, the patch mainline saying it's queued, and eventually patch mainline has to be updated with the first tag that the uh, commit was found upstream. This is handled as well, so th that was in addition to the scripts uh, in the last year. So if we look again, we ran the dash u mode and we see that there are some other changes. And those other changes are, are precisely that, so the tags were updated and this was this is just a manual chore that the scripts now handle for us. Um, this is actually it brings me to my next question. 
I would suggest to deprecate those tags, deprecate the patch mainline and the git repo tag. This might be a more controversial suggestion. However, those tags um, are have many problems. They are redundant, first of all. For patches which are inside the sorted section, we can infer the content of the tags from the sorted section. So again, looking at the series.conf, we see that these patches are in D. Hallwell's Linux FS keys UEFI section. This first first uh, item is the a shortened form of the repository URL, but in an unambiguous way. Uh, it can be shortened because all the repositories that are for, um, from kernel.org start with the same URL, so this is stripped out. And the second part is the branch in that repository, which actually brings me to the second point, which is that the git repo tag is incomplete. It lists the URL of the repository, but does not list the branch. Now, most repositories, the branch that we want to look at is the master branch, but this is not the case for every repository, and in particular, is not the case for this repository. The or yeah, this this repository. So all the remotes that are recognized by the scripts are listed in in this array. And as we can see from David Howells, we're actually interested in two branches, the keys UEFI and the master branch. But looking only at the patch tag, we don't know which which of these two branches, oops, which of these two branches the patch comes from, looking only at git repo. Whereas if we're looking at the series.conf, we know that it comes from the keys UEFI branch. So this this uh, incompleteness is is actually improved by uh, looking at, at series.conf. Next, the patches, a lot of these patch tags are actually incorrect. So just a few weeks ago, I pushed a series of commits to the Slee 15 branch, which fixed over a thousand patches that had inaccurate uh, patch mainline and git repo tags. So I, I challenge anyone who tells me that they sort of grep for these tags uh, it means that whatever you were doing with them was, was, was actually incorrect or, or certainly was not very critical. Um, and then in some cases, the, those tags are ambiguous. So when the patch is in mainline, but not yet in the tagged version, we can't say which version it, it's going to be in, 4.17 or 4.17 RC2. This is a literal example from one patch, but certainly I don't think any kernel has been released after two RCs. Um, are there, like I said, this is kind of a controversial suggestion. Um, are there people who would be opposed to removing these patch tags from patches inside the sorted section? I, Oliver. Can we still refer to a record that maybe, maybe with a microphone. Can we still refer to an arbitrary repo? So, no, the repositories, not for patches inside the sorted section. The repositories have to be listed in that, um, in that, in that list that I just showed. But this doesn't really change anything, because even now we have to update the list of repositories. Yeah. Because what, the, what I'm um, some maintainers have the habit of having topic branches per release. So something like 4.19 something. Uh, which needs to be updated, obviously, for each new release which comes out. So we need to update the list of URLs anyway. So I don't really see a big problem by adding more or less to these things. Essentially, keep them up to date. I'll just say it again because it's not in the slide. I suggest removing these tags for patches which are in the sorted section. So if a patch is in the sorted section, that the repository is in that list. For patches which currently come after the sorted section, which which are usually out of tree or, or shouldn't be in subsystem maintainer trees either, um, we can keep the patches there. Usually it would be just patch mainline, uh, no, never, not yet submitted, and so on, but not so many queued, especially if we do the changes we just talked about. But for patches in the sorted section, anybody who would like to see them stay in, Nobody. So th this this was not such a controversial change in the end. <laughs> so expect this to come uh, before LabsConf 2019. The next thing um, 
that I want to talk about. So I, I said, as the usage of the sorted section grew, users started to see some errors from the sorting scripts. They also started to see crashes from the sorted, sorting scripts, especially in the form of Python backtraces. Um, the scripts are, are essential to the workflow of many kernel source developers. So it's important not to disrupt this workflow. It's important to make sure that the scripts, uh, that there's no regression in the scripts. And uh, to that end, in the past year, I've added some automated tests covering hopefully the majority of the main use cases of the scripts. Um, the tests can be run uh, using the, the script that's on the slide. Again, because uh, different users are going to use this, these, different people have different work environments, they have different releases on their machines, so it's important to test the scripts on different releases. This is a, a handled as well uh, by the, the, the script, which uses containers to test on different uh, releases. As a limitation, so I, I still I think this this works quite well. There has been no regression in the past few months. The problems that we had to deal with were the, were of different nature. Um, there are still some limitation to those tests. So coverage is not measured. So we don't know exactly how good the tests are. We don't know where to add uh, more tests. Um, it's not so straightforward to measure the coverage. There are so these tests are written in Python. They use the unit test module, which is kind of the usual solution for for Python unit. Well, for Python testing, they're not unit tests. Um, but then the tests they run in Python, but they exact more script a sequence of scripts usually that are also in Python. They may be in Bash and they may execute other Python scripts. So it's hard to keep the coverage measurement going through this, this sequence of executions. Uh, not impossible, but hasn't been done yet. And another limitation is that the tests don't run automatically for new commits, that is commits to the scripts themselves, or a new version of the dependencies. So there was a few months ago, for example, an update to libgit, which, which required changes in the sorting scripts. Uh, so there's no like sort of continuous uh, CI or, or testing. Again, this is not something uh, very especially complicated, and it doesn't require knowing the internals of the scripts themselves. So if, if someone wants to contribute uh, to the scripts and set up some more, some better testing, uh, this would be a useful thing. Uh, the tests were useful to avoid regressions, but they were also useful for something else. So once again, uh, Takashi enters the stage, and uh, while we were discussing some problems with the scripts themselves, he says, do they work with Python 3? Because the scripts, as presented last year, used the Python 2 interpreter, and uh, Python 2 is, is obsolete, it's deprecated, and it's also slated for removal from SLEE 15. So do they work with Python 3? Um, this was uh, actually a pretty straightforward change to do. Uh, some of the conversion could be done automatically, but then every porting guide for, for Python 3 says that um, you should have an extensive test suite because this is how you check that your, your Python 3 port was successful. Um, so the tests were useful for that as well, and now the scripts run on Python 3 since early this year. This, this uh, covers the, the changes that took place last year, but there's still some more changes that we want to have for next year or for, the f uh, for future work. Uh, the first one, which, which I'm already working on since the past few months on and off, is improving validation. So we still have only a local commit hook and we don't have server-side validation. As I said, the problem with the local hook, or the problems with the local hook, is that the first one, it does not always run. And this problem would be solved by having validation on the server side. We already have extensive validation of commits coming from, of, of pull requests coming from user branches before they get merged in main branch. So why don't we have validation of the sorting order? And this is related to the second point. We, as I explained earlier, we don't want to have the situation where a user prepares his changes locally and the changes are valid locally, but by the time that they're checked on the server, they've become invalid because of an outside event, an event outside the developer's control. We want to avoid this situation. So looking back at a slide that I showed previously, what, what kind of changes or what, what are the kinds of incorrect series.conf that we can have? So there was the outdated, but this is this is handled now thanks to the non-upstreaming mode. 
there is still the invalid case. So if a user prepares like an invalid series.conf because he modifies the file manually, this is going to be caught by the local commit hook. This is still not a problem. But then are there some events that can happen outside the developer's control, which would, as I described, render a valid series sort invalid by the time that is checked on the server? And this, this is my question for you. Is there such an event? Yes, Oliver. <laughs> so you already sold the punch. Uh, if if a user prepares his changes locally, and between the time that the, the changes have been prepared and uh, the time that they're checked on the server, or between the time the user last fetch it, fetched, uh, upstream rebases, what's going to happen? Going back again to a slide that I showed earlier, the sorted section becomes invalid if it contains a patch which has a git commit tag pointing to an unknown commit ID. And if an upstream maintainer rebases, it changes the commit ID of all the commits in that rebase. And so the commits in the, that were currently in the patches become invalid and the patches must be updated manually at the moment. We want to avoid this, this situation, so we want to avoid we, we cannot avoid upstream maintainers rebasing. This is outside of our control. We can sort of haggle them not to do it, but it's not going to be in the, we have to handle this better. What I'm working on currently is to process each subsystem section individually, actually to process each entry, each patch individually, such that if one subsystem section becomes invalid, it doesn't prevent processing the other sections and the other entries. This means that the commit hook, eventual commit hook on the server could limit the checking to the sections that are modified by a specific commit. So if a, if a new commit, if a pull request uh, suggests some changes to, say, the net tree, but the IPsec tree has become invalid, the scripts will see that the, the, the IPsec tree is invalid, but it will also see that the, this is not the subsection that's being modified, and it will see that the section being modified is still valid. Uh, it's still going to be required to fix the patches in the the, fa the patches that are that have become invalid in, in this other three, but the fixing can be deferred until later, until someone wants to add more patches to this section, until someone knows this subsystem or is interested in modifying it. Um, Other benefits that, that come with this, so th this requires actually quite a few changes to the sorting scripts. Um, other benefits that come with that are the support for guards. So this is currently not supported guards in the sorted section. Uh, I know that Mike Galbraith tried using them for the RT branch to disable some patches. So this is going to be supported. Um, because entries are processed individually, uh, it's possible to report multiple errors uh, in the same way that, for example, if you use GCC to compile a file that has errors, it can report more than one problem at a time. And it's going to improve the support for patch tag validation and rewriting, so make it more robust. In some cases, uh, we can see that a, patch, a patch's subsection doesn't correspond with its uh, Git repo tag, for example. And in some cases, it can be disambiguated and fixed eventually, so we might remove those tags, but at least for now it can rewrite them. Other areas for uh, performance improvement, uh, other areas for future work is performance improvement. So as we saw earlier during the demo, it can take a few seconds to run the series sorting, and this could be improved. Uh, first of all, even if we run the series sort in an, on an empty section, it still takes a short while, like over a second. This is because of the loading of the what I call the cache, so the index of upstream commits. Um, it's stored as a serialized Python object, so it has to be deserialized and objects have to be reconstructed. Switching to a different database format would be uh, probably an improvement here. Um, so it takes time for an empty section, but it also takes more time for uh, a section that contains many patches. And uh, a lot of that time is spent reading the patches to get the, to parse the patch tags. And uh, this could be easily parallelized, so there would be some win there. And finally, another area is, is the indexing. Uh, this is actually a more complicated uh, problem. 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do a topological sort on the upstream uh, repository structure. And as upstream updates, we just redo the whole sort. And I think uh, I would like to find a way to reuse what we have already and just add to this, this index. Um, but this is an algorithmic problem and is more complicated. Um, this brings me to the conclusion of the presentation. So I thought I would just review uh, what my future work section from last year's presentation was and see where we've come since then. So going back to my presentation from LabsConf 2017, what was the future work that I anticipated? I said we would need better packaging. And as I presented, we now have uh, the Git helpers and KS apply inside of kernel source. Uh, the Quilt KS is packaged in OBS. There's still more work to do on this, so we, we agreed that uh, it would probably be a good thing to have sorting scripts themselves being packaged, uh, but there was progress there. I foresaw the need for automated tests, which would run automatically on different OS releases. So this is there currently, we have uh, automated tests running on different OS releases, but there is still more work to do in that area. So regarding the coverage and running these tests automatically, I also saw that uh, I, I called for actually to uh, use put more patches in the sorted section, so extend the usage of the sorted section. This was actually quite a good success, and I have to thank Yoji uh, Kosina for this. He's the one who pushed very hard last fall to put all to make C15 entirely sorted. So thank you very much. Um, then another future work item from last year was to add a commit hook. Uh, as I talked about extensively in this presentation, we have the local commit hook, but we don't yet have a server-side commit hook, but there's, there's still work uh, being done on that. Um, and then there were also some unanticipated changes, the Python 3 port, which was pretty straightforward, and the non-streaming mode that was called for by Oliver and Takashi, which is quite useful. And this brings me to the end of the presentation. Um, I would still like, if, if someone has uh, questions, of course, to answer questions, but also comments on the scripts or really questions about usage and workflow. We have Mikael. Rather than nitpick, but uh, uh, I think uh, other people also ran into this. Uh, it happens to me not as often as it used to, but still from time to time. Uh, I run a CD sort without an argument, which means that it expects uh, to sort uh, standard input yes. by default. Yes. Uh, I understand that it's probably useful for testing purposes, but uh, could it be perhaps changed that default behavior would be to sort series conf and you would have to use arguments like dash to mm. switch it to the mode I where see, it see. expects standard input? Yeah, that's that's something that we could do. Uh, the series insert script already assumes that uh, that it's going to be inserting files into series.conf. Uh, so uh, we could do the same change for, for series sort itself that it assumes uh, series.conf as, as an argument. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's interesting. So that's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, um, the one sh one thing which always annoys me is that the patch we so painstakingly added, all the t patch tag fields, are being lost once the patch is imported into Git. Yeah, the, this is which is quite quite a bit outside of of series sort. Um, well, so it's what, not what outside from series sort, but it's um, whenever you reformat the header, it becomes an idea. So what if we were just adding a blank line between the actual header and the tags we just added manually. Yeah, because this is, this is already supported. Uh, there, there's actually with the patch that we looked at earlier, yeah. your patch is, My patch is like this. Yeah, exactly. So uh, not your patch, but this but other patch, one. Patch. So there, there's this, and th this is because um, the patch was probably prepared like in kernel.git or, or was prepared in Git, and then it was used for math patch to take it out of Git and put it in, in kernel source, and Git doesn't. The, these headers, the, these this patch format is actually RFC like eighty eight twenty two or something like email headers, mm. and and we abuse the this patch format, the this tag format, 
Um, and it doesn't survive if you do uh, get uh, get AM, get apply mailbox. Uh, these headers are lost, and, and yeah, but there's nothing to do in series sort regarding this. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say so. It's not, but so, but this is uh, as you're already reformatting the header for um, when doing. Oh, when oh okay. So um, about. if we are reformat, so we're not systematically reformatting the header because we don't want to change like unrelated patches. But uh, when we do reformat the header, we do if we have to remove a, a and change a patch tag, it's going to be added without the space. Right. Okay. Um, maybe a, something that is sort of related, because I already talked about removing um, removing this tag, the git repo tag, and I talked about removing patch mainline, so we both agreed that we can remove this. Yeah, yeah, sure. What other change we could do is to not use git commit, but in, not use git commit tag, but instead, oops, um, Instead, use a format that is recognized by Git, which is the cherry picked from blah, blah, blah. This is maybe not pretty, but it's handled natively in Git, and it would survive the workflow that you described, so the AAM and the format and so on. Um, another possibility, which is the one used by, I noticed, by the Ubuntu kernel, is to use the same format that's used in stable trees, which is like backport from blah, blah, blah. That appears on on inside the patch header. This is another change. It's not so much change in series sort. We would have to change series sort, but it's a wider discussion. And actually, oh yeah. So so I was going to suggest doing this change, but then I realized that we're still stuck with the references tag, and we're not going to remove this references tag. So either we would have to change the format of references, or it would be kind of pointless to do this other change. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, using that cherry picked from mm -hmm. line might be a bit misleading in some cases because in some cases our patch may be very different from the mm -hmm. upstream commit we are right. referring to. So yeah, probably it would be a I would bit of an abuse. But yeah. that uh, part with that brackets mm -hmm. like Greg uses that might work. And also there are patches that contain cherry picked. In oh, the, the original the, it's patch, already that's there. Uh, Intel patch, I nineteen fifty, I nineteen fifteen oh, patches. Okay, so okay. they are backported from um, another branch. So <laughs> upstream changes which already right. contain this tag. Yes. Okay. So in that case, it's so ambiguous. Mm. Um, Just wanted to give an idea of what we're talking about. It's, it's like this kind of notation. Uh, sometimes it comes between brackets. It's, it's not very fixed, but it, it would be something like this. And, and as we can see, it's the same commit idea. So this, this is an example patch from stable tree. OK, uh, yeah. <laughs> first, um, one thing I wonder is that we have we, Right now, we have many patches in SDA 15 branch that with upstream commit ID, but not in 30 section. Yes, and, yeah, that's And that's what especially, I mean. and that is very messy for Spectre and <laughs> such things. And they also contain the downstream patch. I, I'm not sure. So, not all patches are tagged with the upstream commit ID. So and you're talking about patches outside of the sorted section, which which come afterwards, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. and there are even that patches on top of that in the upstream. And if we want to backport that, then such a patch has to be outside, <laughs> outside. Right. So, is there a reason for not putting these patches in the sorted section? Yeah, that, and that's a question whether we should really sort out that downstream part somehow and move everything into the sorted section eventually or we keep uh, that um, that's in outside forever. Yeah, I, I think that the patches that are upstream should be moved to the sorted section and then the patches which are downstream, they can come after the sorted section. Again, I asked like, is there a reason uh, why they are not in the sorted uh, section? 
You mentioned that you checked that there are yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, even yeah. how many. Like Did you look at the who edited them? So <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, those people. I, I looked at this just quickly while preparing the presentation. We we can do this during the coffee break, maybe. <laughs> If, so or I if, had so I if if people have more questions I'll I'll take yeah. as many questions or if someone remembers are. that uh, he added uh, <laughs> many patches <laughs> right. like this outside of this sorted patches is there so someone who's going to admit they, they can tell us why <laughs> so I do have a limited number of patches that are in the a downstream section mm -hmm. that have git commit IDs mm -hmm. it's part of a multi it's part of work that's going to be several series that's broke out over several months and um, they're still being actively evaluated and at which point the entire set of series is done, then I'll move them all in mass uh, into the sorted section. So but at the moment, right. the patches in question have a tendency to behave differently on different machines. So it's it's a multi-stage effort. Okay. When I'm done, I'll, uh, I want to keep an eye on where we currently stand, so that's where I have them right now. But the, the, in theory, they do belong in the sorted section, but until this problem is completely resolved, I want to keep it, them collected together, right? Uh, so don't forget about them. Um, and are these patches in mainline already, or they're like in one of your... Dreams? Yes, but I've only partially applied the series that's in mainline, because some parts of that series introduced regressions in mainline that I didn't want in SLEE, and they're being resolved. And I, I want to keep what the series looks like, as is so okay. when the entire thing and there'll be three or four series for a finished when the three or four series are all complete then i'll know which parts belong in sleeve 15 and then i'll throw them all into the sorted section okay this sounds like quite a specific use case yeah and it's, workflow. It's, it's super specific and, and it's probably different from what takashi is, is also mentioning i, I, I probably the only part i might uh, be the only one that has, like, has that, that, has a, that, that this has that has this particular workflow and it's only because it's a performance related and probably yeah yeah um, um, but the, I, I can't think of uh, th that's a fairly specific use case. It probably has a much of an excuse for other people, but I'd be, I, I, I wouldn't uh, object or strenuously to a force sorting, but <laughs> but I'd have to review that whole workflow. And when I encounter this situation in the future, I'll have to come up with something completely different just to avoid that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, how many of uh, patches like that are there? Um, I think I'm currently at eleven. Okay, so but they're all in the same place. Yeah. So th there's probably more patches that can be moved to the sorted section, and we can leave Mel stuff alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I certainly have no problem moving them into the sorted section. Ultimately, it's just, and I do like the sorting. It's just, it's just right now until this yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. gets sorted. Are there more questions, comments uh, about I, workflow? Yes. I was on. wondering, as the scripts can, uh, as you said, add the correct patch mainline uh, tag, whether we should subdivide the sorted section according to tags and abolish the tag? Well, the, so we agreed that we're going to abolish the tags. Um, what so do you mean subdivide the sorted section according to tags? Now it's it's sorted, but you don't say in which uh, RC you added the tag okay. or in, in which kernel version. So th this is yeah, this is an idea I had a long time ago and didn't implement. It would be to automatically generate commands that look like like this and yes, and then we could drop the tag, which really makes no sense anymore. Oh, actually, this way, but and and so on and this yeah, I I, I, I would. Are there other people who would like to see something like this? Okay, so th this sounds like uh, before removing the tags to have the support for these comments, generate them automatically. Why do we need them in the first place? Um, all, all, Oliver, can, so, so people who raise their hands, why, why would you like to see those, those comments? <laughs> yeah, uh, it makes things more clear. So I just like, and uh, one more point is, uh, if we can also mix the, the stable patches into the solid tree, that's... 
Okay, th this is quite a spirit. different discussion. Uh, but may, just before we jump into that discussion, let's let's so, try to sort out yeah. the, this comment business. And one more reason is when we uh, rebase on a new upstream version, you have a you, you, you immediately see how many patches will stay. Yeah, this, this immediate. I, I agree with you. Um, you, sort, you could sort of make the same argument for, oh, let's keep the patch tags because we can grab through them. And, but it's quite easy to whip out some other script that, that's going to answer this. Um, yeah, so is there some more compelling reason to have the, these kinds of comments than I like them? Because we, we can just say, I don't like them. <laughs> well, the, the question actually was not uh, who thinks we need them. The question was who would like Ah uh, yeah okay so let's let's question again who likes to have comments like that. Oh, that, that was the question you asked. oh th it is okay, okay. Th there's there's already fewer hands than uh, than than there were a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, so some people like them, but no one needs them, and uh, yeah. So maybe no comments in the end. This is yeah. I'll answer like a politician. No comments. And so we were going to get to sorting the stable patches. Yeah, 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 it works. Okay. The new stable patches are added to the sorted section, so. Are they? Oh, okay. And are they added with the ID from stable tree or from original tree? Upstream. Okay, that's great. Uh, but are they. <laughs> And are they added in the form that they are in the stable tree or upstream? Because sometimes the uh, commit yeah. is going to change yeah, slightly yeah. between the two. Actually, something in between. Sometimes okay. you have to backport it right, just right. to be applied to the sorted section. Okay, so, that, yeah. that sounds like some, some more work for you, but it sounds like the best uh, yeah. what I would have recommended. So yeah, th thank you. I hadn't noticed this, but... The good thing is that there is no... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> The good thing is that there is no uh, 4.12 stable tree for SLE 15. So, yep. yeah, but I still take stable patches and put them okay. in the sorted at, section. At the beginning, so. yeah. So, they're going to be somewhere, yeah, somewhere in there, I guess. You wouldn't find it by name. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good actually, because I, I also don't like these, these names with the numbers. Um, any other comments, questions? So you say that you merge the stable patches in, into the sorted section, SA15, and it has no <laughs> conflicts in the kernel vanilla? It doesn't conflict with what? <laughs> Could you, yeah, maybe, yeah, sorry? Yeah, uh, um, the conflicts. So you didn't have to refresh. Uh, yeah, I have to. And in that case, kernel by neither can be created properly because kernel by neither contains the stable patches. Yeah, but kernel vanilla. Uh, how is it built? Actually, I don't know. Kernel by neither, um does not exclude the patch patches kernel org, and That's so cool. if the stable patches are Refreshed, so modified, and it might come so no longer cleanly applicable. Yeah, there is no stable for It's uh, yeah, but what I am adding yeah. to Sli fifteen yeah. is uh, patches to yeah. uh, patches dot Susie. Uh, this is about SLE 15, so there is no running stable for 12x, so these are only new patches, so we can still have vanilla built on 4.12.14, I think. Yeah, exactly. And the new, and the new patches are added to patches.suzy, not patches.kernel.org or something. This would be a problem in the next release if we, uh, if we base our SLE 16 or SLE 15, whatever, yeah. SP4, on some... LTS, stable kernel, and if I put the stable patches in the middle of the sorted series, it would be a problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so people who want to take their break, you're welcome to take your break. I'm going to look, just do a demo for fun to see uh, 
which patch in the uh, section that comes after the sorted section have, have git commit tags. You can stay in and watch if, if you're entertained by that. But otherwise, thank you very much for, for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>